Despite only being a 21st century conceit, Vanquish is a really big name for Aston Martin and very serious. So the launch of any new model is in big news for, for the company. And this is the third generation Aston Martin Vanquish. It's got 835 horsepower, 1,000 newton meters of torque, and we're here to have a really good look at it. Right, I don't think Q has had a go at this one, so I can't talk about cloaking devices or spiked tires, or even a ejector seat that can flip the car back onto its wheels if it ends up on its roof. But I'll try and talk to you about what it does have. So basically, one of the key things for this V12 engine is to get bigger cooling apertures at the front, more cooling air into the vehicle without introducing too much aerodynamic drag. So it's got a huge grill down here in the front of the car, really dominant feature, makes it look nice and aggressive. Coupled with this, we've got air vents on the bonnet, that's to get cool, uh, hot air out of the V12 engine bay. So it's just making sure that air flows neatly through there, cools the thing and then comes out of the car. And you've also got a large splitter down here that contributes downforce. They've designed it so that there's less downforce at the front than there is at the rear, um, just to make the car sweeter to drive and more balanced. So overall, the look of it is, is just really, really nice at the front. It's got great presence, looks really good. Some nice touches that are sort of specific to the Vanquish that mark it out above a DB12, for example. Yeah, it's impressive start. Now at the back of the car, we've got a mix of, of styles. Some of the stuff here is familiar from other Aston Martins, such as this ducktail boot lip here that you've got this shape here. Uh, but then other features are sort of specific to the Vanquish to show what it's like as a high-end performance GT. So we've got quite a big diffuser down here. That's behind a flat underfloor, so it really helps the aerodynamics of the car. Basically keeps the car, you know, cutting through the air as efficiently as possible. Really clever systems down there. Lots of carbon fibre here on the trim. We've got quad exhausts, it's a V12 engine. The big feature of a Vanquish that really marks it out and, you know, steps it apart from the Vantage and the DB12 is this, which is known as the Shield. It's a sort of panel that stands a little bit proud of the back of the car and it really does give it a load of presence on the road. When you're following another Aston Martin Vanquish, it's like, that is really quite distinctive. It's framed by seven LED blade tail lights on each side. You can have this in a variety of finishes. This one here is obviously carbon fibre, but you can have it in a, a choice of finishes uh, as befits a car of this standing. And yeah, it just makes the back of the car look fantastic. It, again, it just gives it that feeling that it is the flagship of the Aston Martin range. Now, down the side of the car, we've got some lovely things to talk about. First of all, this enormous haunch on the back of the car, really muscular, gives the car that stance, that feel that it's something very high end. We've got 21 inch forged alloy wheels here with these uh, nice sort of goldy bronzy finish. They're on Pirelli P0 tires, which is unusual because most Aston Martins are on Michelin. One thing you will notice if you're looking at the car is that it's very long in the side. It's longer wheelbase than a DB12 and that just gives it again that sense that it's something a little bit different from the rest of the range because it is a very big long car a lot of space between the axles and then the other feature is as a result of that you get more distance between the base of the a pillar and the front axle so to sort of make this feature of the car here more interesting on the eye you've got this panel here with the side blade in it and that again just makes the Vanquish stand out from its stable mates. Right, most important part of the Vanquish, the engine. 5.2 litre twin turbo V12. It develops 835 horsepower and 1,000 newton metres of torque. That's a lot. Drives the rear wheel through an eight speed automatic gearbox. You're talking 0 to 100 kmh in about 3.2 seconds and a top speed of 345 kmh. That is 214 miles an hour. It is not just the engine from a DBS Superleggera that's been repurposed. They've actually only kept the V-angle, the bore and the stroke. Everything else has been reworked. So it's a completely new engine. It's absolutely phenomenal. In practice, you know, it's got minimal turbo lag, excellent throttle response if you're in Sport and Sport Plus mode. It's just a, a real work of art. And to see a V12 still being built in this day and age is, 
it's kind of refreshing in its own way. So yeah, covered in carbon fiber. You have a plaque here on the strut brace that tells you who did the final inspection of the engine. It's Steve Smart in this case. Um, yeah, the centerpiece of the Aston Martin. And they had to do a V12 in this, in the Vanquish, because obviously the Vantage and the DB12 are both running very powerful V8s, 665 and 680 horsepower. So to differentiate it, to really take it up market and take it to that exotic level, it was felt that a V12 was necessary. Okay, the interior of the Aston Martin Vanquish. As you would imagine, very high-end materials, a lovely mix here of fine leather and man-made microfiber for the ceiling. And we've got carbon fiber on the doors in this one. It's really nice ambiance. It's not the grandest interior in the world. There are cars at this level that maybe have a bit more showmanship around them, but it's, it's ergonomically very correct. One of the things that Aston Martin does is keep physical buttons for certain features. So some of the climate control is here. We've got some uh, other buttons that can control various features on the car. You've got switch gear down here on the transmission tunnel. Everything's very nice. Everything that you touch is very nice. The paddles are nice and metallic. This rotary dial for selecting different modes of the car is haptically, it's beautiful. It's like metal, really solid feeling. Same for the gear lever and these rotary dials here. So it's very nicely laid out. In terms of technology, you get two 10.25 inch screens, one for the cluster, one for the infotainment system. This one's also enabled with Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Uh, one of the main features of the Vanquish and something that a lot of high-end cars have to have now is a top-end sound system. In here, it's a Bowers and Wilkins setup, 15 speaker, 1,170 watt, that is proper. And the reason the door cards are actually quite simple in design is because they want you to focus on the Bowers and Wilkins speakers stereo that is here in the door card. So they're actually making a feature of the stereo Similarly, it's the only thing you can see on the dashboard, the two tweeters either side and the main centre speaker are sort of quite prominent on the top of the dash. So the sound system in this car isn't just sort of like an afterthought and, and part of the spec. It's, it's actually a feature of the cabin in the Vanquish. I mean, it's very comfortable. It's a very comfortable seating position. The driving position's good. You can see out of the car really easily. The, I mean, the rear view's not brilliant, but it's not terrible either. There are supercars that are a lot worse than this. Obviously, this is a GT. A um, little bit of Mercedes switch gear here, but we'll skip over that. It's just the column stalk, really, and these pads on the wheel. But generally, I mean, it's a very high quality interior. One of the decisions that Aston Martin has made is that it's actually only a two seater. There are no seats in the back. You can't option them up. There's just sort of like storage ledgers and more carbon fiber back here. But the decision is that basically the people who are gonna buy this sort of car don't ever need to trans transport people in the back, so two seats it is. Yeah, it's a great place to spend some time. Uh, it doesn't let the rest of the car down, and very nice, very nice cabin indeed. Right, so here we are on the road in the Aston Martin Vanquish. Um, let's begin. We've got three drive modes selectable down here on your rotary dial. Beautiful rotary dial. Very nice haptics as you turn it through. So you've got GT, Sport and Sport Plus. Now, in GT mode, which is what we're in now, you've got very, very light steering. You need to give the throttle a fair old prod. I mean, I'm down to about 50% throttle there and only now is the car starting to pick up. So the throttle goes quite soft, and the idea is that it rides a little bit better in GT mode. To be honest, it's still a little bit firm. Um, you will feel a lot of transverse ridges. It's, it, it picks up quite a few imperfections in the road, but that's because this is a sporting GT. It's not an out and out luxury one. It's got to keep some of that dynamic character that is true to an Aston Martin. So GT mode is okay as a sort of entry level, but to be honest, we find in the cars, a lot more cohesive and a lot more with it in sport mode. So in sport mode, straight away, you get a lot more weight and feel through the steering wheel. That's a great start. The throttle is now a lot crisper. The smallest press of the throttle starts to wake that V12 engine up front. So personally speaking, I'd probably drive it in sport all the time, each to their own. 
But the ride comfort doesn't really deteriorate in these modes, in either Sport or Sport Plus. It's not like the car is ever appallingly crashy. Um, it's, it's probably not quite soft enough in GT mode, but it's not appalling. And, and actually, it's fine in the other modes. But I mean, when it comes to performance, what more are you going to want from a car than, you know, 835 horsepower and 1,000 newton metres? To say this thing's fast is doing it a great disservice. It's not just fast, it is mind-bendingly quick. And you have to be really careful about where you're going to open it up. So we've got a bit of traffic in front of us here, probably a good 10 car lengths in front. There's no point in me opening the throttle now because I'll be up with that in no time at all but the great thing about this car is that they've given it true Aston Martin feel uh, and sound as well so one of the things that normally happens with a V12 engine and turbochargers is they can be quite muted you don't get a lot of induction it's all basically all on the exhaust and what have you but the way they've calibrated this is the noise of it is just phenomenal and you don't have to be redlining it, you don't have to be driving it really hard to get that sound. Just the merest flex of your right foot um, to get the engine waking up and you get that lovely V12 bark at the back of the car, you can just, it just makes it feel faster than it actually is because even when all you're doing is just adding a bit of roll on acceleration, it just sounds it sounds proper. I mean, that is quick. <laughs> it's quick and it sounds tremendous. And it, there's not a lot of turbo lag. So one of the things that this, this car sort of reinforces in your mind is that you're not actually driving a turbocharged car. You're driving something with a normally aspirated V12. Well, that's what it feels like. And that couldn't be any better for a Vanquish, really. That sort of ties in with its, with its, you know, its, its origins in 2001. It's a really, really good powertrain. Eight-speed gearbox as well, automatic gearbox. No problems with that. It responds quickly and smoothly on paddles to requests to change gear. Very rarely balks a shift. If you're asking it to shift down or shift up when you're on the paddles, you know, you have no problem with that. But then the other thing that the Aston Martin Vanquish does, it doesn't just do straight line speed. The payoff for that ride comfort, the fact that it hasn't got the greatest low speed ride comfort of, the, of these big GTs, is there are a few GTs we've tried that are this good in the corners. Seriously, despite the fact this is a long wheelbase car, it's, it's just so balanced. The body is very, very flat in corners, keeps itself on a nice, level even keel and it just it just feels approachable like you're never intimidated by a thousand newton meters of torque you can really get into the throttle and corners and, and rely on the traction and the grip from those huge rear section tires the steering's great when it's it's in sport and sport plus it's great it's got nice weighting good amount of feel it's accurate, gets the front of the car turned in, you know what, you know, it's consistent, you know what you're going to get every time. But yeah, for such a, you know, for such a physically big car, it's incredibly impressive to drive and, and one of the best sporting GTs we've ever tried. The reason for that is it's relatively light. It comes in at less than 1.8 tonnes with just a driver on board and okay that's not you know super light levels of of, of body weight and, and mass but for a car of this size and this power less than 1.8 tons that's really impressive the payoff is it's just absolutely brilliant in the corners we do get a sense in this dry weather um, it's got lots of grip in the dry weather but you do get a sense that provoking it in the wet might not be the best idea there's a feeling from the rear axle when it's deploying its power you can feel the car squatting a little bit and just pushing torque to the wheel which gets you know it's got the most traction at the back so I, I wouldn't necessarily be provoking this car in the wet but you know nitpicking here really 
in terms of something to cross a continent with and to just feel good at the wheel for every single mile you're there and then when the moment comes you find the right road and you can just have a bit of fun with it this car is immense absolutely immense Talk about stopping power as well it's got carbon ceramic brakes they reduce unsprung mass by 27 percent uh, compared to if they were made of steel uh, conventional materials they're fantastic at no point have we ever really noticed anything about the pedal feel or the bite which means that they're doing their job because we haven't ever come to a corner and felt like we're trying to rein a lot of you know a lot of car in hard charging car in down to a speed to get through a corner none of that whatsoever they're just natural natural feeling brakes nice bite loads of strength they don't fade if you know you're on a, a, a twisting road and you're sort of pushing the car along no problem at all it's it's just a really well sorted sports car this with a luxury angle on it you know it it, it feels different to a vantage or to a db12 but it's hard to explain it it's it it does feel more of a sports car than a GT, but there's something about it that gives it that extra, that extra little bit of specialness, and that is mission accomplished for Aston Martin. It's just so balanced, this car. So incredibly in tune with the way the suspension works, the balance of the steering, feel and the weight and the meat of that steering the gearbox the brakes the drivetrain it's all cohesive and of a piece it feels like a car that's perfectly set up in each of its attributes to come together into one glorious package it's really well done like I say apart from the apart from the low speed ride and an occasional thumping over transverse ridges there's not a lot you can criticise this car for. There is one thing it's not particularly great at, as you can probably imagine with a twin turbocharged V12, fuel economy. So earlier on we were driving along on a motorway and yeah, it was doing sort of 14 litres per 100 kilometres, which is a lot. It's about 20, I mean, it's, it's, it's about 20 mpg, I think. Uh, on a rough calculation that has increased somewhat now when you decide you're going to have a bit of fun with it yeah it's not quite as uh, efficient shall we say we're at 19 litres per 100 kilometres now so a little bit more juicy but the point is the kind of people who buy this sort of car they're not bothered by fuel economy and you, you, you know no one's realistically going to come in to driving a car like this and expect it to do 40 to the gallon so can't really mark it down for the fact that as predicted an 835 horsepower twin turbo v12 petrol is not very good on fuel just as an example now of the, the the sort of the ride issue the gt side of things for the aston so i am in sport mode here we're in sport mode as we go along it's just a little bit noisier in here than perhaps you would ideally like this is not the worst road surface we're going over and you know you can hear a lot of what the wheels are, are covering what what ground it's going over a little bit of you know a little bit of grittiness to that ride quality where you're just getting a little bit too much information about the road surface but the payoff of that comes when you're driving it a bit quicker so no, it's not the most luxurious GT in the world, but it, it has to do that sports car side of the character. And I think actually, okay, it's a little bit, see, it's just picking up and amplifying a little bit too much on this road surface, but it's not a deal breaker. It's by no means a fatal flaw. Um, and we think it's worth it for the way the car drives when you are on the right road. 
So the Aston Martin Vanquish then is everything you would expect of a high-end flagship GT like this. It's got gorgeous, glorious looks, fabulous interior, an absolutely amazing powertrain and a decent chassis as well. It's not cheap, these kind of cars never are, and it's native UK, it's going to be £330,000 at least, so you can probably extrapolate from that for other markets around the world, but frankly, for what you're getting, doesn't feel overpriced in the slightest. A quite incredible, incredible car and the best Aston Martin we've ever driven.